It's the Vicki McKenna Show. I'm very pleased to have standing by from the Conservative Caucus. You can find them online at theconservativecaucus.org. Jim Paff. Jim, the greatest retail politics I have ever seen in my lifetime just took place over this past weekend. It was, hands down, the best political stunt I've ever seen. In fact, it was so good, I almost don't want to call it a stunt. And of course, I'm talking about Donald Trump slinging French fries at the drive through window of a Pennsylvania McDonald's. By the way, I, I'm a huge Donald Trump fan all the way, but it's even bigger now, not only because it was such an effective uh, thing to put out in front of the American people. My dad owned 103 fast food restaurants to this height. I'm a huge fan of fast food <laughs> and grew up around it. But um, listen, this is this is why Donald Trump being a billionaire, being a real estate mogul from New York City, and being someone who everybody has seen for years on television is not intimidating or icky to the American people. He is a man of the people in a sense. And of course, you know, listen, he is a billionaire, okay? I mean, everyone knows there's a difference. But they like a guy who really thinks that they're kind of important. That's exactly what he did here. Plus, he made Kamala Harris look stupid, and she is stupid and politically, and and I think sometimes just not mentally all there. She, he he really showed her up for trying to make herself look like something she's not, which is what all politicians do. Donald Trump does it very little, and that's why we all love him because he's he's the real deal. He's not playing games. He really wants America to be great again, if I may use the phrase. Yeah, I think that's true. And the the other thing was when somebody asked him, you know, what, what what's your takeaway from this? He says, well, you know what? Um, now I have an idea of what it, it's like to order the French fries. It's not just, you know, order the French fries, but there's somebody back there that's doing work. So there was, there was a, a, a humility in his approach to this that you would never expect from anybody on the left or, frankly, any Republican politician except Donald Trump. People say he pick J.D. Vance to try to appeal to working class people? I don't think so. I think he picked J.D. Vance to keep MAGA going after Donald Trump, um, because I don't think Donald Trump has any problem as a billionaire, real estate developer, from, from, from getting the working people to believe he actually cares about what goes on to make their lives go. Well, you know, J.D. Vance does appeal to working people, and he'll Billy Elegy does that, but a lot of people don't remember Hillbilly Elegy. Sure. I agree with your assessment. And uh, uh, Donald Trump really, uh, really makes it clear also that he actually cares about these people. You know, someone had put out a tweet somewhere, I think, or something saying, oh man, no, it's really, really hard making French fries. Folks, I've made French fries. My dad owned fast food restaurants. It's not that hard, you know. It's a, it's a lot of work, but it's not hard. What is the, and, and that makes it even more appealing what he did because he's willing to I, – I, again, there are some staged aspects of this because the Secret Service has to do this or that to protect him. But that said, he was right there getting his hands dirty on it, and people love that. It is – it's populist in a way. But it's also who Donald Trump is. He doesn't look down on people. I mean, if, if someone is, is in his organization was ever acting foolishly or not performing, okay, well, he dealt with that pretty severely. You know, you're fired, right? But, but when it comes to people doing the jobs that they do, he re, he's always yes. been, always been the person that respects he, they, everybody for what they do. They don't look, he doesn't look down on people. That's it. That yeah. isn't in a nutshell. She does look down on people. He doesn't. She panders. It, it isn't pandering when Donald Trump does it. He seems to genuinely enjoy this and genuinely care about what's going on with people. What the Walls Harris campaign did was, you know, slap their logo on camo hats. Like that's what the rubes in the Midwest want us to want us to do because they're so dumb. If we give them a camo trucker hat, they'll vote for us. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Pander, pure pander. But when, you know, when, when you're given an opportunity, by the way, she was given an opportunity to do exactly what Donald Trump did and sling French fries at McDonald's. And she blew off the company's offer to do exactly that. She could have very easily, um, you know, had made some hay with this saying, you know, if she really did work at McDonald's and I don't believe she did and McDonald's has no record of her. Um, 
she could have said, well, I work there. He just pretends to work there. She didn't even know how to respond. She didn't know how to respond. She certainly wasn't going to take up a fast food restaurant's offer to work in front of uh, greasy French fries for, you know, an hour, an hour and a half. Um, and so I think that I think you nailed it. He doesn't look down on people. And her entire life has been spent figuring out ways to look down on people and exempt herself from the rules that everybody else has to follow. Well, keep in mind, McDonald's corporate does not keep records of every franchisee's employees. And so let's just say that she actually did or whatever. But I don't think she did. I actually don't believe it. But this is what's really interesting to me. She is your standard politician that looks down on the American people, thinks that you need to be serving her and serving her ideas. In fact, actually, she just had a, a video that come out today where she said this is not about individuals this is about what's good for the good uh, what's for the good of everybody not just some individual well no I, i beg to differ with you the american dream is about the individual and what we do corporately we do very little of because every individual should be able to pursue their own dreams their own desires and the contrast between your standard politician like kamala harris who looks down on the american people And Donald Trump, who's a billionaire who does not, becomes very, very interesting. I'm telling you, Donald Trump really shames politicians. This is why. It's not just because he has a populist message or whatever. It's actually because he is popular because people are appreciative of this guy who does not act like other people. He acts like he likes us for crying out loud. That's the other thing. Politicians tend to act like they despise their constituents. Donald Trump acts like he really loves people. He really loves the people he's talking to. He's the kind of guy who could sit at a truck stop and and jawbone people for, you know, two hours. Um, At the same time, he's the kind of guy who could go into a boardroom and do the exact same thing. Um, There's a famous story in his book, The Art of the Deal, where he talks about um, or the author talks about he has Held cabs. You know, he didn't wait around for some, you know, some limo service. He, if you needed to go somewhere, he'd hail a cab and, and, and chat up the cabbie. This is what he was doing, you know, when he was making million dollar, several hundred million dollar um, real estate deals in New York. So um, that's what we don't. We're so used to being being treated like garbage by politicians, even the ones that say they're going to do things for us, that it's very refreshing. And it seems so weird to see a guy like Trump do what he did when if you think about it. That kind of retail politics was very popular when, you know, in the Kennedy era. Um, It was very popular before that. But we just are so used to being treated like like afterthoughts or a means to an end by politicians. It's so refreshing and nice. Well, and and what's interesting about what you just said is this: we really have left all that. I mean, we're in the TV age and we have fully converted to this uh, separated Uh, and not equal circumstance with politicians and Americans. It's a very socialistic idea, by the way. It's not at all American the way politicians are. And and frankly, I'm going to be very honest, on both sides of the aisle. This has got to stop. People are tired of these aloof, uh, frustrating, lying people that get elected and don't do what our hopes and dreams are all about. Donald Trump really does believe in Americans' hopes and dreams. He's not going to give it away to everyone. It's not like, okay, I'm going to throw a check out and everyone can become a billionaire, which, by the way, is what Washington politicians claim they want to do for everybody. He doesn't do that. He he demands that you make it on your own merit. And that's the policy excuse me, that we need to have coming out of Washington, a reduction of government. So everyone can reap all the benefits of the good decisions they make as they're trying to pursue their own interests. And we don't need Washington to pursue our interests for us. Donald Trump in, it, it totally encapsulates that ideal, and that's why people love it. Last, last question for you, Jim, and this is just a pure political question, poll-watching question. We had a poll out today in the battlegrounds that had Trump leading in all seven battlegrounds. I'm not sure I trust it. Um, I don't want people to get overly confident. Um, but certainly um, th- this is the, the momentum is with Donald Trump here. I mean, coming off the Al Smith dinner where, again, um, she missed an opportunity to act like a real human being. Um, the McDonald's, uh, by the way, J.D. Vance was 
pouring beers at a bar in Green Bay. So um, while, while people were watching a Packers game, but those battleground states are 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 key here. Um, I'm you know I'm worried about early voting. I'm worried about the steel. I'm worried about the mass importation of illegal aliens. I'm worried about the manipulations that are going on with lawfare. How, how, what is your sense about? The accuracy of these polls or the momentum that a lot of us, at least who are watching, feel is going on out there? Well, the way I look at polls, just as a guy professionally who deals with these things, is uh, I want them to give me insight into whether the efforts I'm undertaking right now will be successful or not. So this is what you have to judge with every campaign. If campaigns aren't doing the work on the ground, they will lose no matter what the polls have. This is actually precisely what did happen to Hillary Clinton in 2016. Way up in the polls, everyone thought she was going to win. And and by the way, I think the polls sucked too then. But just taking that out of the equation for a minute, she had this uh, p- potential lead that she was just going to walk right into the White House, and she lost it all because she blew everything off. At this very moment, Donald Trump is on the road every single day, lots of places, working the crowd, doing the, the uh, thing with McDonald's like we saw. And I'm also – I have friends in Pennsylvania who are working that very strongly. I think Pennsylvania is going to be won based upon what I see actually happening on the ground, and that is, that's a must-win for Kamala Harris. She's not going to be able to pull it out. The only reason Josh Shapiro is the threatening legal action against Elon Musk is because they're worried about winning that state. I do believe the polls are accurate, but what is necessary for Donald Trump to bring in this win is for ground game and everything else that they're doing to get people motivated to actually show up at the poll. The poll tells me we're winning. Now I just need that group of people or what that group of people represents to actually show up on election day. So we can win. That's we there, there is some good news in terms of just voter registration. Voter registration is higher among Republicans in the battleground states. I'm not sure what it looks like in Wisconsin. I know Wisconsin is closer. Kamala Harris wouldn't be spending time here. She's here again today. Um, we've got Barack Obama coming. Tomorrow is in-person absentee begins in the state of Wisconsin. Um, you know, so, you know, despite what people might think that, oh, she's she's blowing off Wisconsin to go shore up Michigan. She's not blowing off Wisconsin. She's spending a lot of time here dragging Liz Cheney um, because, you know, she's huge. She's huge with the uh, with the working class people of Wisconsin. Jim, Liz Cheney, let me ah. tell you. But um, but th- yeah, so it's about. It's about running as hard as you can flat out until the very end and dragging everybody you can to the polls. And I don't know how, you know, how the nuts and bolts are working behind the scenes in the campaign. All I can tell is headlines, um, but I haven't seen those dire headlines that I'm used to seeing. So that gives me some sense that we can do this. Well, I, I, I agree with you in the sarcasm. There is no union worker in Milwaukee drinking Milwaukee beer, one of the great beer capitals of the world. Uh, in some bar is sitting around wondering what Lewis Cheney thinks about anything, and they think even worse about her dad because they hate war. Liz Cheney, everything, every decision they're making is wrong. I really do believe the momentum is on Trump's side right now. I think that that actually, in spite of whatever good or bad his campaign is doing, and I think they're doing a lot of good, um, I I think people are just motivated to say, screw it, we're not going to have any more of this. Kamala Harris's message uh, that she actually shot down when she said she's no different than he, she wouldn't change anything different in Biden's administration policies. Um, I, you know, she any distinction she's trying to make between her and Biden is not going to work. As I've said before, 2020, Trump undeservedly took blame for the mostly Democrat governor's shutdowns and the economic harm that that caused. The economic harm is on Joe Biden and Kamala Harris right now. That gives Donald Trump an advantage. Notwithstanding the fact that he's having great events and the look is really good right now, that's good momentum in the last two weeks. Yeah, and she just flip-flopped on her flip-flop on fracking in Pennsylvania. So uh, what a mess. What an absolute mess in a key state for her. Hey, Jim, thanks very much for joining me on the program today. Good to have you. And please check out The Conservative Caucus, theconservativecaucus.org. Thanks, Jim.